Dude, dude's uh, taking on the role of uh, Northwest Ministry Kids Director. Josh Wood's been doing pastoral uh, family ministry for the past 11 years all across the Pacific Northwest and into northern Montana. Um, his big passion, though, and this is what I so love, is he likes helping leaders, loves helping leaders find their identity in Christ, use the gifts and abilities that God has given to them, and just sending them out to do it. Um, please help me welcome with a big round of applause, Josh Wood! Awesome. Well, thank you. Let me see here. I'm looking for a stand that I can put this on. While I'm, while I'm getting my stand, I want everybody to experience something that I experienced last night at Applebee's. Some of you are my friends on Facebook, but if you're not, I'm going to give you permission right now. Pull out your phone. Look me up. Josh Wood. Friend me really quick, but before you friend me, because I want to be all your guys' friends. Before you friend me. Hey, thanks, dude. Look at, look for the video of me pulling on the um, <clears throat> paper towel from the paper towel dispenser, and you're going to hear what I heard. It was awesome. Go ahead and turn your sound up, too. <laughs> you heard it. Okay, keep going. I want to hear the chorus. It's kind of like when you tell kids to rub their hands together, you know what I mean? I was so scared last night. I pulled the towel, paper towel from paper towel dispenser and the, it screamed at me. I like jumped backwards. Ah! You guys are hearing it right now. Isn't that awesome? That's funny. Yeah, go ahead and friend me on Facebook and I promise I will accept every single friend request that I get. Hey, I'm so ex Are you still doing it? You're still going to do it. That, that, that's going to ruin my whole message, isn't it? <laughs> Who's ready to listen to me talk for 55 minutes? You know what I know is so true is that there's like a little bit of this. Uh, by this session, you're like, I'm kind of tired. How about you? Yeah, I feel that way too. But I'm so excited to be in front of you and with you with the opportunity to share what I feel like the Holy Spirit has really laid on my heart. So I would just ask for you just to pray this prayer with me in a second. And that's that we would have open ears to hear what the Holy Spirit wants to say to us. That we'd have an open heart that he could change our life, do something inside of us, and that he would bless our feet so we would go and do what he asked us to do. Really, he'll give us the energy to hear that right now. So let's go ahead and bow our heads, close our eyes. Jesus, uh, I pray right now that exact prayer over us, that we would, we would have open ears to hear from you because you're speaking to us. You want to encourage us. You are, you are saying that to us. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. I am going to be with you. Help us to hear you say that to us. God, I pray that we would have an open heart because you want to do a work inside of us and change our life. God, we don't want to leave um, this conference with the, being the same exact way that we came. We want to be growing and changing, um, becoming more like you. So reveal that to us. We're willing, God, that third prayer, touch our feet because we're willing to go step into what you've asked us to do. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, I am so, um, again, humbled and privileged to be able to be here with you and um, to really partner with you in ministry. That's how I see this next season of life, and I'm super excited to see all that God is going to do. I've already been able to see the teams that have been put in place, and many of you I've had a chance to meet, and I've just been so encouraged by that, really. Every person I've met is just, um, we're inspired to do the work of the Lord in, in the Northwest, Northern Idaho and Washington, and I'm so privileged to get to be a part of that. So thank you for that. I'm a people person. Um, I'm a high I. If you ever took the disc profile test, all right, I'm a high I on that, which just means I love people pretty much everything. I'm pretty extreme towards the outside. I, I love people, people, people. Anything I can do together with someone, I, I want to do. So I, some of my friends, they, they got into like racing and like that was kind of cool. But then they got into, like, the Spartan races. Have you guys ever seen those Spartan races before? Everybody's probably seen those, right? Well, they got into those. They started doing them. And then, then my church decided that we were going to start doing Spartan races. And um, I thought that was kind of neat. And then they were like, Josh, why don't you go ahead and lead the Spartan race? And I'm like, well, that's, that's cool. But, like, do we, do, what does that look like? Do we do it together? So I watched a video of people doing it. And, like, they were running in packs. Now, they have the first group of people that they let do the Spartan race. They're called the elites. All right, the elites. I'm not one of those people. 
And um, they, they look really, really buff. And, like, the guys all take their shirts off and stuff. That's kind of weird. And they're, like, running around, oh, you know. And then they, like, go. And then they run. And, and they're going as fast as they can to get through it. My group, as soon as what I saw happen, they were, like, we get to run it together. So, like, if there's an obstacle where you need to get over a wall, you get to help each other up over the wall, give each other a boost. I was like, okay, that's cool. So we get to run it together. I'm like, I'm in because we're doing it together. I just love to do stuff together. So it was me, our youth pastor, <laughs> our electric guitar player from our church, one of my friends who was a doctor, and then my pastor, who at the time his name was Kevin Gear. He used to be in this. Many of you know Kevin. All right, he's awesome. I'll tell him that some of you whoop for him. Um, he'll like that. Um, he, and he ran it too. Now, I was, the doctor was super fit, all right? But the rest of us were not. But I was the most fit of all of the rest of us, which made me feel really cool, to be honest. We very quickly, when they said go, we were the last race of the day. They, the not elites, elites go last, all right? We very quickly were in the very, very back of the entire pack, all right? And we were just going and going. And really, we should just call this race, like, the race of cramps. Because we, it was so awesome because every few minutes, I got a rest for about 10 minutes at a time because someone would develop a cramp in their leg. One point, our electric guitar player, he put his leg over this, like, <laughs> it's almost like one of those things that you, like a hurdle, only it was much bigger. And he got a cramp over here. Jesus, 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 Jesus. And we thought he was dying, you know. We laid him on the ground. We're like, are you okay? The doctor, he's like, Michael, get back here. Because Michael was the doctor. Rubbing out his cramp. At one point, we, Kevin was going over there at an eight-foot wall. And so some of us got over it, and Kevin was the last one to go up over this. This is my lead pastor. And, and um, I'm speaking high, highly of him right now. This is awesome. Um, uh, we lifted him up, and he was about to go over, and all of a sudden he got a cramp in his calf. And he goes, oh, oh, I'm coming back. And he literally just let go and fell backwards into our arms. <laughs> and we laid him down on the ground. The best part about it was just a couple minutes later, there was this huge group um, that, had, that was right there behind us, and they came up, and it was a group, group of ladies. I don't know. They were probably in their mid-50s, maybe 60s. And um, they, they looked over Kevin, and they were like, guys, can we move him? And we were like, yeah. And so we just drug him off to the side. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> And I'm wondering how quickly this is going to get back to him right now. <laughs> oh, oops. Um, I love to do life together. It, I, I know it's part of my DNA. It's who I am. It's a value that God has put inside of me to, to live life together, to do it with people. Um, but I believe that life is better when we do it together, just period, for anyone. Life is better when we do it together. That's really the church, to encourage each other, to lift each other up, to be together. And on the topic of living a life of worship, this is really, I guess, the sermon in a sentence. If I was to say it to you, it would be, a life of worship is meant to be lived out together. And so, I want to talk to you guys about that because the very reason that this conference exists, this conference that is called Fusion, which I saw a few people in here tonight who they, are, they helped, uh, were the brainchild. This, this conference is their brainchild. Dixie's on, and Doreen Heater, and Kevin. They, the reason they put this together was because they said when two or more elements coming together, it creates another element, a different, a dynamic. There's a dynamic that's created when, when Jesus followers come together. They encourage each other. They lift each other up. That's, the, that's fusion in the description, the process or result of joining two or more things together to form a single entity. Here's what I know about kids' ministry. We can be very isolated. We find, can find ourselves very easily in a place where we're going, I didn't see that happen. In fact, oh, I so appreciated what Di had to share earlier. Just amazing and so true, even about how sometimes we don't get to see the things that we're hearing about maybe at a later time, whether it's in a staff meeting or in a conversation. Oh, I didn't see that. I wasn't a part of that. What's going on over there? And there are processes that we can put in place to help 
with that, but the fact is just geographically even sometimes we're by ourselves. As, as kids ministers, we might be in another building or another room or, or whatever it is. But I know for anyone it's easy to be isolated or, or to isolate ourselves. That's why if our natural tendency is to isolate and we know that Satan, the, our, our enemy's main plan is to isolate us so that he can discourage us, then we have to be intentional about being together and building relationships. And that's why I love that you're here. That's why this is so important and so special. And Fusion has always been one of my favorite events and really times of the entire year is because I get to meet with some of people who are in my context, maybe not in, uh, anywhere around where I live. Maybe they're at a different size of church or a different um, makeup of community, but they, but they understand it. And I can, be, I can have relationship and be encouraged by them. That's why it's so important and so cool, and I'm super appreciative that you guys are here. If anyone should be intentional about this process of fusion, it's us as kids pastors. There's a powerful dynamic that's created when Jesus followers do life together. And it's more than just being different, different parts of the body of Christ, too. Although that is so important, each one of us with our own gifts. We'll talk about that in a minute. But, but it's more than that. It's the, this thing that's created when we decide, hey, we're going to do this together. It's with this in mind that I want to talk to you guys about three things that are powerful. Just three of the things that are powerful when we choose to do them together. When we do life together, these three things, a, a dynamic is created. The first one is this. It's powerful when we celebrate wins together. One of my favorite verses, well, favorite chapters in the Bible, Acts 2, when the Holy Spirit falls on those in the upper room, Peter goes out and he preaches this message. Thousands of people are saved. And then afterwards, what we see as the result of the, is the church beginning. And really, it's what we like to go to when we talk about how the church really should be, right? It's, it's like, oh, that's really cool. That's, that's the church that we want. And church planting and multiplication is a huge, um, uh, it's a huge driver right now. And it's amazing. And a lot of people are looking at this verse when they go to plant a church. They say that, I, I want this experience. In my, my Bible, you can turn to Acts 2 if you want. My Bible calls this the fellowship of believers, I think that's cool because it reminds me of the Fellowship of the Ring. But um, it says this, And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed, this is the part I want you to hear, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. I've always thought that part had all things in common. It was super interesting. Because I'm like, how is that even possible? All things in common, what does that mean? It's because they united around the mission. They united around their love for Jesus. Their focus was singular. They had all things in common. They shared all things. We see even farther. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. The result of this Pentecostal experience that the church had, the result of Pentecost, one of them was this togetherness, this desire to do life together. And it was like, it's never more clear in the Bible than this verse where it's like, that we, this is what we want our church to look like, right? And it seemed that they really enjoyed being together. That there was like a holy togetherness and, and their response to the Holy Spirit filling their lives and moving them was to say, you know what? Let's do this thing together. Let's love Jesus together. I love that part that says, an awe came upon every soul. 
many signs and wonders were being done through the apostles. Because that comes back to our first point. We celebrate wins together. There's something that is awesome about when a group of people get excited about something together, especially when it's something that God's doing. I remember I was at the game. Maybe some of you know about the Fail Mary. All right. The Fail Mary was when the Seahawks were playing the Green Bay Packers on Monday night. And it was not a fail, by the way. That should be retitled. It was actually within the rules. It was a catch. I won't go into that. There was no more time on the clock. Uh, well, that's not true. Otherwise, it would have been able to throw it. There was like, I don't know, seven seconds or something. Seahawks are down by more than a touchdown, and they need to throw the ball to the end zone. Russell Wilson gets the ball, drops back. They're way in the middle of the field, and he just throws the ball up in the air. I was there with one of my other pastor friend, Mark Middleton, and we were, we just watched it. We happened to be right in the corner. It was super cool because we were right in the corner where that ball was coming towards. All of the players are going to the, to the one spot and they're looking up and you saw the ball start to come down and the whole group jumps up. Well, we lost the ball and we're like looking at each other. What happened? What happened? And you could see on the screen, the officials were looking at each other. They couldn't even tell. They're like sorting it out. All of a sudden, one official runs over and he puts his hands up like this, that it's a touchdown, which means the Seahawks have won the game. At that moment, I have never experienced the jubilation like I did. People started jumping. It was like an earthquake. I've, I mean, because the whole stadium. I started hugging everyone. Perfect strangers. I'm like, I love you. I love you. Like slobbering tears in your eyes. I was like, hug, hug, hug. High five, high five. I got down out of my seats and I started running around. Ah, ah, ah. I went to hug a person. He was a Green Bay fan. I was like, okay. But it's that moment of celebrating something together is so special. When you get to do that with someone else, it's, it's just awesome. There's a dynamic that's created when you do it together. And that dynamic is so much more power, powerful than a football game when me and you celebrate what God is doing in our lives. I, I, we always had testimony time at Sunday Night Church when I was growing up. And that was such, now it's, you know, it's a little old-fashioned and stuff, but it was such an awesome opportunity for me as a child, and it was forming for me to see the church come together and say, this is what God has been doing in my life. And there's so much white noise in our world today, with just so much information, right? It's not that nobody's celebrating what God is doing. I, that's happening. But maybe sometimes we just don't hear about it as much uh, because there's just so much out there. It's powerful when we have a moment like this and we can create them in our churches where me and you look at each other in the face and we say, you know what God's been doing in my life? This is what's happened. When we come together, we get to celebrate. We get to celebrate all that God has done. I love testimony time. I love hearing about what God's doing. Just as powerful as the, as the part where people do prayer requests is when people go, here's what God has been up to. Why do we celebrate wins together? Why? One, God is glorified. God is glorified when me and you lift his name and say, this is what God has been doing. I love it when people talk. <laughs> this is vulnerable, right? I love it when people talk good about me, right? But don't we all? Right? Not just the absence of people talking bad about me. Like, I'm glad when they don't do that, too. But, like, if I, I like to hear people say, you know what? That was really good. Did you see what he did? This is what he did. That makes, our God deserves that. He deserves that. And I'm going to give it to him. And that's what we do when we're together. That's part of the power of, of me and you looking each other in the face, being together, being present in the moment, saying this is what God has done. He gets the glory. Other thing it does, it puts things in perspective. Perspective. It puts me in perspective. Positionally and missionally. What I mean by that is positionally, when I remember what it is that God has done, what, what I do is I'm like, oh, wait a minute. It's not about what I can do. It's about what you can do in me. Okay. Whew. Isn't that better? That's a lot better to me. 
to say, God, it's not about what I can do, but it's about what you can do through me. I'm going to do my part, yes, but it's about what you can do through me. I'm willing to step out and do it, but it puts me in position. Also, missionally, it reminds me of why I do what I do when I celebrate it. Because wins propel the mission forward. Wins propel the mission forward. You know what I would love for our kids' ministries even? I would love to celebrate wins together. What's going on? Some churches have been stuck on one win for so long that they've been celebrating the same thing for like 10 years, and you're like, that win has turned into an unhealthy Kodak moment for you. Right? Wins, wins. My, one of my leaders said wins, they take your face and they push it forward. Wins propel the mission. Wow, God, look what you did. Look what you're going to continue to do. So one, celebrate wins together. Here's a question I have for you. What wins could you celebrate with someone here at Fusion? What's a win that you could celebrate? Now, I think that we should have health outside of the, the context of this conference. If you are looking to Fusion to be the answer to, any, to all relationship in your life, well, obviously that's not going to happen, right? That's not healthy. But within the context of Fusion, who's someone you could encourage with a win? Could you be encouraged by sharing a win? I want you to think about that. To do the mission, it's powerful when we do the mission together. By the way, I'm wearing my conference pants. I don't know if you know what conference pants are. Those are the pants that you picked out a month ago and thought, yeah, I'll fit into those by conference. And then you put them on for conference and you're like, yeah, nope, I don't really quite fit yet. That's okay. I'm feeling it up here. <laughs> Also, I feel like they look like NSYNC could have worn them, for sure. But I'm totally cool with that because I love NSYNC. I'm just going to be honest. All right. <laughs> That's actually true. <laughs> Do the mission together. Our mission is so... Hmm. It's so great. And the harvest is so big. I am overwhelmed at times by it. When I'm driving down the road and I see all these people passing me and they don't know Jesus and I'm like, I can't like, affect that person, it feels. And it bugs me. And when I know all these kids, because I know that there's a 4 to 14 window where 63 to 85% of kids in America, that's where they give their lives to Jesus. That's what those surveys say. Uh, and I'm like, I, I can't do all that by myself. And, I, and I, I can't. God, I would be willing. Nope, that's not the way it's going to go. Can't happen. We do the mission together. It's so critical to, to do the mission together. To remember that we say, my church, my church, my church. To remember the big C church. That it's, we are the church, not this you are the church. I am the church. We are the church. We kill each other. <laughs> I, I, we're, I, I, I'm challenged by this I, because I love music, and I like drama or the arts, and I like to speak, and I've grown up in church, and I knew from the age of five I was going to be a pastor. And so I'm challenged by this from the Holy Spirit in this past season. I want you to be a better liver of the message than a critic of the message. When you come into a gathering of the church, are you a critic of every component of the gathering and the service and the message? And if you're criticizing me right now, I'm just going to mess up a bunch, you know, because I'm, I'm just not really not that good. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm just not perfect. I just love Jesus. I'm doing my very best to live out the scripture. And, and you know, uh, but, but we just kill each other. When really we should be saying, hey, I'm in this with you. What's going on with you? 
what are you doing? Instead of feeling insecure when we see success from other churches, we're going, oh my gosh, someone just went from death to life. I'm celebrating with you right now. What can I do to be effective? Because that's just, that is the best thing I've ever heard that someone gave their lives to Jesus. It's the best thing I've ever heard, ever. Because life is super short. And then is forever. Like, like, have you ever tried to think about that? Because that, that scares me. I actually prayed about that the other day in the car. I said, God, I'm intimidated by forever. Will you give me peace about that? Because I don't understand it. But you know what I do know? The sense of urgency that it should be in my heart right now. I know how to live. I know what the application should be right now because of that at least. So we do, we do the mission together. Why do we do the mission together? Learn and benefit from each other. You know, have you ever been working on something? It could be anything. I don't know, curriculum or how do I do a check-in system or who knows. And um, you have been working on it so long, like you kind of want to be the one to come up with the idea. And finally you're just like, how do you do this? And someone's like, yeah, so we do this. And you're like, thank you. I just wasted half my life on it. Clink. You know, it's like there are more answers out there and more encouragement from, from the people with, again, the, here is that part, the body of Christ, all the different parts. Um, and giftings and experiences. Lean into that. We have a room full of people right here who they might be hesitant to be picking up the phone because they're in the same situation you are. And it's like you be the one to pick up the phone and call. <clears throat> Here's the missional component of why we do it together. Missional fellowship creates an attractive dynamic. One for the person who works in it, right? I've never heard a person say, I, I don't want to serve on a good team. Everybody's like, oh, is that a good team? Is that a good, is, are they a healthy team? Everybody just wants to be on a good team. It's just true. It doesn't matter what your personality type is. Now, maybe there are people out there who are like, no, I don't ever, I don't want to be on a team. I've just really not met those people. <laughs> Everybody wants to serve on a good team. It's attractive to be part of a team. John 13, 35, this is how they will know you are my disciples, by your love for one another. We do the mission together. We are the church. And again, we go further, faster. That's one of those tweets. Do not quote me. You've heard that probably a thousand times, okay? We go further, faster. I didn't make that up, but it's true. We go further, faster together. And day by day, attending the temple together, breaking bread, that's together, in their homes, they receive food with glad and generous hearts, praising God, having favor with all the people. Okay, this is very relational. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. I believe that the unity and focus of the church impacted by the Holy Spirit filling their lives, that unity and focus is what attracted people to Jesus. And they said, this group of people over here, they got unity happening. They're doing it together. I want to be part of that. Isn't that true that this search for identity oftentimes just comes from, I just want a group of people to be around that are doing something that seems like, and it's loving? That's the church, man. We have the best answer for that. Together. Fusion. Question. What can you do? I didn't write this part very well. Because I was like, how do you say it? Because I feel like I'm saying do, 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 do a bunch. But what can you do to do the mission with someone better? If you're writing that down, you can figure out a really good way to write it. What can you do to do the mission with someone? And let me just put it here. What about right now at Fusion? What about, what about today? What could you do to do the mission with someone? Do you need to ask questions? Do you need to share? Third thing is this. We celebrate together. We do the mission together. Keep watch together. We keep watch together. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. 
even our Savior, the mighty warrior, the all-powerful, desired togetherness in his darkest hour. He looked to his friends, and he said, can you keep watch? Will you share this with me? Can we, can we be together? Now we know that he had to go and wake him up because they, 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 they chose not to. They fell asleep. But Jesus' heart, he goes, couldn't, couldn't you even keep watch? Couldn't, couldn't you keep watch with me? I needed you. I need you. That's Jesus. Now, if that's Jesus, then what does that mean for us? We need someone to keep watch with us. It's the strategy of the enemy to isolate. But we aren't meant to live in isolation. In our joys or our sorrows. And there's a powerful dynamic created when we do what we're doing here. And when you go to someone and you say, this is what's happening in my life, I need you to keep watch. I am overwhelmed with sorrow. This is our, this is our Jesus. I'm overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, right? A couple years ago, we went through a really hard time. And it's one of those things that I hesitate, and I even have a hard time bringing up. I feel like I'm articulate most of the time, but for some reason, this one's hard to articulate. And um, we have two, two boys and a girl, one biological, and we always wanted to have another one or two or three or who, whatever, right? And we, so I got a call, and Bethy said, I'm pregnant. And that was, like, so exciting right? And all the, all the awesomeness that comes. And you're just like stoked. You start thinking about all this stuff and you don't even realize how excited you are about this exciting thing that's going to happen. And then she started to get pain a couple months into it. And she went to the doctor. And right before our huge Easter event, the night before, she had a miscarriage. And we, mis- we miscarried. That's unspeakable, right? And, and several people have gone through miscarriages, and you know. But when, when that happens to you, it doesn't matter that other people have gone through it. I mean, you appreciate them coming around you. <laughs> it doesn't matter that, that anybody else has experienced you. You're experiencing this depth of sorrow. And you know what? <clears throat> it happened. The same thing happened a couple years later. Here, these time, this time in our life where we're asking God, why? What's going on? And you know what I did? It's so funny because I'm, I'm like a real people person. And I'm a really an oversharer. So like, I'm sorry if I overshare because I'm probably going to do that at some point with you. So I'm like, okay, and that got a little awkward right there. Like, that's, that's who I am. I'm like, I want to talk about everything. Everything. My tight pants <laughs> that are creating complete muffin top right now. And I'm like, I'm like, I, I talk about everything. And my wife asked me a couple weeks into this process, she goes, are you okay? I'm like, yeah. And she's like, you're not talking about it. I was like, I don't know what to say. And I experienced what I have heard so many times that we talk about where we say, don't be isolated I need, we needed the church to come around us and surround us with their love. And we experienced that through several people on our staff. One of, one of our very good friends took our kids for a couple nights, made us food. The church functioned, asked us how we are. You know what's actually kind of funny about it? Is that then everybody kind of mo- moves on to a certain extent, Right? You just kind of forget about it. So you, then you have to be intentional about having those conversations. And it's just, so, it's just a thing, you know. There's no, like, perfect, like, it's like, I don't know, there's no science 
for it to be perfect. But what I know in the middle of all that is that it's the, it was the church coming around us that helped us to heal. And it was in the middle of that that our friends and my leader saying, what is going on? Do you need to take time? Do you need to go? You let me know. It was that being together, even in the moment of our darkest hour, that really allowed us to come out of that without bitterness and resentment in our hearts. And I just wonder if there's anybody like that in here who you're going through a time, and I'm not going to compare it to that, but, and, and you might go, well, it's not like that. It doesn't matter what it, it is, but you're in that moment, and you say, I need someone to keep watch. I, don't, I haven't asked, and I don't know if there's anybody, but I need that. That's why what we are doing here. That's who we are going to be as pastors, as leaders, as Christians, as the body of Christ, coming around each other. Why? Because um, we all lead real lives. You know, it's just one thing to see a person. How are things going? I was just talking about this yesterday with somebody. How are things going? What are you up to? Or people are like, how have you been? And what's the number one answer? Busy. Right? I've been busy. But what you really want to say is like, do you have a while to sit down and talk? Because I actually do have real stuff that I want to tell you. It's not just busy. <laughs> but do we take the time to do that? Because it's so important. Do you have somebody like that? Maybe there's part of your local church, but maybe that could happen here. I would just encourage it. I would love for that to happen with our leaders. Sometimes we just need someone to know about what's going on in our lives. I don't think the disciples, even though Jesus told, he told them what was going to happen. It's like they just couldn't quite wrap their mind around it, right? But he told them, he just wanted them to be there. It's not like they were going to change it. He's like, can you just be with me? Maybe you've heard of the Jewish custom of sitting Shiva. It's for seven days they mourn. And, um, when someone dies and people are allowed to come and visit. And sometimes when the visitor comes into a Jewish home and they're in mourning, they'll talk to them and, and they can either, they're not really supposed to talk to the people who are mourning unless they're talked to first. That's part of the powerful um, process. And maybe that's, that's where you're at and you would say, you know what, I, I just need someone to just be with me. I can share what's going on, but I just need someone to know about what's happening. They don't need to give me any magic cure or say anything, but you know what? They could pray with me. They could pray for me. I'm almost done. But why keep watch together? It allows the church to function. It allows the body to function how it should. I met with a kid's pastor just recently sharing that at one of the darkest times in her life, is when she realized that she was called to ministry because she saw the church come together and do what it was really supposed to do. So, here's my question in all of this. A life of worship is meant to be lived together, we know. And I would just wonder, where are you at in your life? Maybe, where are you at in your need and your desire to have togetherness, to be connected? And here are a few questions I would have for you. Is there something that you need to celebrate with someone? And maybe it's a thought that came to your mind even while I was speaking. If you don't have anything to celebrate with someone, you can start with your testimony, right? Is there some way that you need to be doing the mission with someone? Some way they could encourage you, a question you might have, something you could do together. And the third one is, do you need someone to keep watch together? It requires vulnerability. Doing life together it requires, requires vulnerability. It really does. And um, <laughs> it's not easy to do that. But what I've noticed is that with a group of believers is that it, all, it just pays off. Some people can hurt you when you let them in. I get that. But we have a group of leaders and brothers and sisters in Christ here who can encourage us and lift us up, and we can trust. We choose to trust. We choose to trust because that's where health comes from, in the body of Christ and in the church. 
Here's another question for you. Maybe you're, you're going, you know what? I'm doing pretty good. I got this like relational thing and this together thing. I got it down. Like I've been, I've been doing pretty good. But what I would ask you is this. Is there someone that you could do that for? Is there someone that you could initiate togetherness with? This concept of fusion, two or more elements coming together to create a dynamic. I've spoken with a, a few people in this room and you have shared with me, I feel a little isolated. So that means to other ones of us, as well as you, that we're going to take the initiative and reach out. One of the things in this next season that you're going to see in our network with kids ministry is we're going to, um, there's a few of our areas that don't have area leaders. And so be on the lookout because we're going to be strengthening that. Because I believe so much in this concept, not just of a fusion conference, but of a fusion body of Christ that we want to develop relationships with each other and bonds of encouragement because, because why the, one of the things we talked about, our mission is so great and so important and so valuable. We believe in that. We believe in doing the mission together.